Okay. Hi. Good evening, all of you. Basically, ICCM organized this such type of program like a structured training and education program for the nurses for the better academic purpose to improve the quality of nursing quality, to improve the ICU quality. So that's why this type of courses ICCM started. So for the purpose of this structured training and education program for the nurses, today we will discuss about coagulation profile and TEG, better known as thromboelastogram. Because in day-to-day -day practice in an ICU or in an emergency department or in hospitals, there is the coagulation profile is one of the most important <laughs> investigations. When patients comes to you in an ICU in an emergency, patients with suppose liver failure patients, severe traumatic, uh, severe uh, trauma patients, because we are giving so much of fluids that patients after one to two days lands up into DIC type pictures, acute liver failure, so many coagulation abnormalities is there. So that's why today we will discuss what is the coagulation profile, what is the coagulation status of that patients, what is the abnormalities about uh, coagulation factors. Because coagulation is the very important to maintain the homeostasis of the blood because it's responsible for clotting the blood. And one other important aspect of this is TEG because if you measure coagulation profile, it measures isolated. This much the value like PTINR, APTT, fibrinogen levels. But in TEG, it measures in, in vivo gross total effect of coagulation factors interact, how each other that coagulation factors interact to each other. So for that purpose, we did TEG. So for this topic on coagulation profile and TEG, we have today great speaker, Dr. Manmohan Borse. He graduated from Mumbai itself. And now he cleared his IDCCM, EDIC, that is the European Society, and cleared his MRCP UK also. And now he is the working at just one of the most pre prestigious hospital in Mumbai itself, like Just Look Hospital, Mumbai. So we, in today, we are very privileged to have such type of our young dynamic intensivist, Dr. Manmohan Borse will elaborate on this coagulation, will uh, light to throw lights on coagulation profile and TEG. What is the and, uh, importance and day-to-day -day basis on day-to-day -day practice? What is the importance of coagulation profile and TEG? Now, over to you, Dr. Manmohan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manos. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Great pleasure. Uh, good afternoon, all. So we are, as Dr. Manoj has explained, the, what is the importance of coagulation profile and take in day-to-day -day practice and critical care specifically, because we come across uh, many traumatic patients. We come across many DIC patients in ICU. So coagulation profile and take is one of the upcoming. Tag is um, like we used to do coagulation profile for a long time, but tag. Uh, it's been there for a long time, but it is the availability and the cost is an issue. But uh, in a major center, it is being done. And as the power is decentralized, the tech is getting available in tire two and tire three cities as well, because it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a point of care test and we can assess what are the blood and blood products requirement for that particular patient, particularly in case of liver failure or DIC patients. So tech is important. So. Uh, my lecture preliminary will be like first half will be more of provision profile and second half will be more of tech. So I have covered almost 18, 20 slides of tech. Uh, so it will be new for few of you. Uh, that's why I have given extra time for the tech. And the tagline for the <clears throat> topic is also coagulation profile and tech separately. Okay. So in coagulation profile, I have given a two or three slides for the uh, bleeding time and clotting time also. Uh, not very important in terms of critical care, but we do start from that. So that's why I included those two slides also. So let's start with the first slide. Okay, yeah, before starting that, uh, this is the new logo ICSM has launched uh, on 30th of September. I attended the event, it was, it was a great event. Okay, all thanks to Sheila, ma'am. So we'll start with the definition of hemostasis. What is hemostasis? Hemostasis is nothing but a mechanism 
which leads to cessation of the bleeding. If there is a trauma to the blood vessel, whatever the process which stops the bleeding from that blood vessel will cause will is nothing but a hemostasis. This process involves multiple multiple interlinked uh, steps, and the cascade to form the plug which closes the damaged blood vessel is nothing but a hemostasis. Okay. So the mechanism of hemostasis involves two three important things. First, the immediate response to the trauma to the blood vessel is like a it causes vasoconstriction, and then it can cause uh, it will lead to the moment blood gets exposed to the damaged blood vessel, it will lead to platelet activation. Platelet activation is nothing but a <clears throat> primary hemostasis. We divide the hemostasis in primary and secondary hemostasis. So primary hemostasis is dependent on the platelet count and platelet function. The secondary hemostasis is dependent on the coagulation cascade. So the today's topic, the bunch of the most of the slides are going to be covered on the coagulation cascade, which is nothing but a secondary hemostasis. So, uh, and uh, we know the anthropic control measures what we can do. So, how the coagulation cascade plays an important role in our hemostasis, that is what we are going to discuss. Okay. So, as I told, three mechanisms for the coagulation cascade. First, the moment it gets exposed to the damaged blood vessel, the blood gets exposed to the damaged blood vessel, the coagulation cascade uh, activates. It leads to formation of prothrombin activator, which will lead to the formation of thrombin, and thrombin will activate the fibrinogen and it will lead to formation of thrombin. Okay. So everybody knows the coagulation cascade. Uh, there are like extrinsic pathway, intrinsic pathway, and common pathway. So talking about intrinsic pathway, it starts with the exposure of the factor 12 to the exposed thing, which will activate the factor 12. Eventually, it will activate the factor 11 and 9, and that will come. That will go into common pathway, which will activate factor 10 into activated factor 10. Other side of extrinsic pathway, the factor 7 will get activated on exposure and it will eventually along with the calcium it will eventually activate the factor 10a so activated factor 10a will activate uh, will convert the prothrombin into thrombin okay so from this from activated factor 10a it's a common path so uh, factor 10a will convert the prothrombin into thrombin and thrombin will convert the fibrinogen to fibrin and fibrin is a will form the cross linkage with the primary hemostasis product, which was the platelet, and it will form a clot and it will stop the bleeding from the blood vessel. Okay. So what are the important tests we do in ICUs or uh, trauma ICU, CT ICU to assess the hemostasis? The first basic things, complete blood count, peripheral blood smear to assess the morphology and the counts of platelets, okay. bleeding time, clotting time, uh, prothrombin time, activated plasma, thromboplastin time, APTT, uh, thrombin time, fibrinogen, and thromboelastography. So we'll start with the bleeding time. Bleeding time is the time interval between the puncture of that blood vessel or skin puncture and unassisted stopping of that blood. Okay. So time of puncture. So when they test, actually, they take the blood sample and from there we stop on its own. That is a thing but a bleeding time. Normal bleeding time is nothing but one to four minutes. Okay, and this is the actually test of primary hemostasis. It it, it, it reflects the function of your platelet. Okay, so that's why bleeding time is important. So uh, bleeding time, like you can get, uh, get it done uh, immediately. If you are waiting for the CBC, you don't have platelet count. Bleeding time can help you to assess the platelet function. Okay, so prolonged bleeding time, where do we see? We see it in a platelet problems like a ITP, DIC, Drugs which can uh, affect the platelet like aspirin, cunin, heparin. Heparin can cause hit heparin drips on the side of India. The other uh, disease like von Willebrand disease and vascular defects like Snellai Barbera and HSP. Okay. Going ahead with clotting time. The clotting time, the time in uh, the definition of clotting time is the time interval between the moment when the bleeding starts and the moment when the fibrin threads are first seen. So where do we see the fibrin? Fibrin is actually formed in, in the coagulation cascade, which is nothing but a secondary hemostasis. So if you ask me, BT, blood bleeding time is assessment of primary hemostasis and clotting time is assessment of secondary hemostasis. The normal time in duration for clotting time is two to seven minutes. And it depends on the clotting factors. Okay, uh, the, as I said, uh, diff, uh, prolongation of clotting time will show the reflect the defect in the coagulation cascade. That is nothing but a secondary hemostasis. So where do we see prolongation of clotting time? in the deficiency of clotting factors like hemophilia A or B, 
vitamin K dependent deficiency uh, correlation factors like a factor 2, 7, 9, 10, and overdose of anticoagulations. Okay. So going ahead, from here we start more of uh, critical care related blood tests. We we usually start CBC, PT, INR, APT, PT, we, we start with that. Okay, so this is the first thing we do. So PT, INR, PT is a very important test to assess the hemostasis. So prothrombin time, it measures the time it takes the plasma to clot when it exposed to tissue factor, which assesses the extensing and common pathways. As I said, the prothrombin time, it involves the extensic pathway. Extensic pathway is nothing but a factor seven, which gets activated, and then eventually it will activate the, go into common pathway, which will activate the factor 10. Okay, so prothrombin time is nothing but a measurement of extensic pathway. Okay, the normal range for the PT is 11 to 13 seconds. And we can calculate INR, international normalized ratio, which is based on the WHO formula. Based on the PT and control, we can calculate the INR. Normal range for INR is 1 to 1.5. Okay. So where do we use PT INR? We do yeah. test. We do test PT INR when there is unexplained bleeding uh, to diagnose the DIC. To obtain the baseline values prior to starting anticoagulants, we do direct. Anticoagulant like oral or IV or subcutaneous anticoagulants, okay, and monitoring the warfarin therapy. Okay. Assessment of liver synthetic function is also one of the important functions to assess the PTI. Okay. Causes of prolonged PT, uh, yes, everybody is aware of that warfarin when we cause the prolonged, which is nothing but a uh, extensive pathway. So, vitamin K antagonist is a warfarin, vitamin K deficiency, liver diseases. Uh, Dr. Manoj, can you just mute yourself? I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, causes of prolonged PT is vitamin K dependent antagonists like warfarin and vitamin K deficiency, liver diseases, and DIC. And we do see antiphospholipid antibody syndrome also have a prolonged PT. Okay. Activated partial thromboplastin time, which is nothing but APT. What is a what it reflects, it measures the time it takes plasma to clot when they're exposed to substance that activate the contact factor, which assesses the intrinsic and common pathway. So APTT is nothing but a assessment of your intrinsic pathway. Okay, so what all the co uh, coagulation factors involved in a clotting factors involved in a intrinsic pathway? Factor 12, 11, 9, and 8. Okay, so the normal range for the APTT is 25 to 35 seconds. Where do we use APTT? It's uh, again uh, evaluation of explained reading, diagnosis of DIC, again prior to starting uh, anticoagulants like a heparin, uh, monitoring of unfractionate heparin, uh, where we, in therapeutic anticoagulation we keep a range of 1.5 to 2 times of APTT. So regularly we need to check APTT in that case and monitoring therapy of direct thrombin inhibitors like uh, ergotropan and thyroidine. Causes of prolonged APTT, yes, heparin, uh, direct thrombin inhibitors like the uh, agarroban and heridin. Volatile disease also called, can have a long, prolonged APTT, hemophilia A and B, which is nothing but a factor deficiency of A10, 9. So uh, this is one chart where we see only prolonged PT. Uh, in other section, we can see the only prolonged APTT and the common one where we can see the prolonged PT in APTT. So, uh, prolonged PT with normal APTT, we see factor 7 deficiency, okay, liver diseases, synthetic function, where poor synthetic function, warfarin use, and DIC. Okay, DIC is common, but uh, it can present with the prolonged PT in normal APTT. Okay, but warfarin is specifically PT. What is the uh, investigation of choice to assess the anticoagulant effect of warfarin? It's a PT INR, not APTT. Uh, many people who are on uh, heparin, uh, we do just PT INR. Please don't do that. Do the APTT because the uh, investigation of choice to monitor the heparin uh, anticoagulant effect is APTT. So where do we see the prolonged APTT? It's a factor deficiency like 8, uh, factor 9, 11, and 12. Call me 11, this is I already told, and direct thrombin inhibitors. Okay. And uh, where and the prolonged PT and APTT we see in DIC, liver disease, Vitamin K deficiency, okay, vitamin K antagonists also can have a prolonged epididine in PT mode. So there is an overlap between PT and APTT, but there are few drugs and few uh, uh, few uh, diseases where we see isolated prolonged PT and isolated and 
uh, in some cases where she isolated prolonged APT. Okay. Going ahead, uh, thrombin time, this is, see, we do PT for extrinsic pathway and APTT for intrinsic pathway. So thrombin time is nothing but a assessment of common pathway. We don't do it in regular basis, but for theoretical purpose, we should know. Thrombin time is a, uh, it measures the final step of coagulation, which converts, uh, which will uh, assess the conversion of fibrogen to fibrin. The normal range is at 14 to 19 seconds. Okay. The prolongation of thrombin time, it reflects the, the function of fibrinogen. Okay. The level of fibrinogen. If the fibrogens are low, the thrombin time will be prolonged. Okay. So unlike PT and APTT, the thrombin time is not usually used for a day-to-day -day screening process. But in some cases, we do prefer to do uh, thrombin time. But the availability again is a question. Okay. So use of thrombin time, uh, where we have a prolonged PT and APTT both, the overlap where we have both, and we are not able to uh, point out where exactly which part of the coagulation cascade is involved. Okay. Uh, evaluation, evaluation of irritated fibrinogen disorder. As I said, if the fibrinogen levels are low, thrombin time will be prolonged. Detection of heparin in sample. If heparin is present, TT will be significantly prolonged. So fibrinogen, uh, the last state from the coagulation profile. Fibrinogen, we do it uh, in a DIC cases, like in more, uh, more often we do in uh, 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 obstetric cases where we have a, uh, our, uh, uh, we have sepsis related DIC in obstetric cases where in, you can use it in other cases also, but commonly we use it in fibrogen in DIC related sepsis related DIC. So, fibrin is the precursor of the fibrin and is the last part of the cascade of the coagulation cascade and it's a principal component of the fibrin part. Normal levels of fibrin is the 200 to 400 milligrams per deciliter. During the clotting, fibrinogen is converted to fibrin and who converts the fibrinogen to fibrin? The thrombin. Okay and which polymerizes uh, and provide a structural component of the clot, a strong major structural component of the clot. Uh, abnormal levels uh, of fibrinogen, if the levels are less than 50 or 100, can result in an impaired clot formation, okay, and can risk increase the risk of bleeding. Uh, there are two types of fibrinogen disorders. One can be genetic and other can be acquired. Congenital fibrinogen disorders can be quantitative like and qualitative. Quantitative will be a fibrinogenemia or hypofibrinogenemia. Qualitative will be dysfibrinogenemia. Okay. Acquired disorders like dysfibrinogenemia can be caused by liver disease or DIC. So these are the common two common things we see in critical care, like uh, acute liver failure or DIC. Like Dr. Manoj explained in the beginning, where do we use, uh, where do we commonly do the coagulation profile and uh, tag? It's like a DIC and Acutely of failure. Okay. Uh, you can see uh, hyperfibrinogenemia and HLH also, hemophagocytosis, lymphohistocytosis. Okay. So uh, we have finished the first part of the coagulation profile. Now the second half, the thromboelastrocopy. Tech. Okay. So though the availability is a bit uh, uh, less in the periphery setup, but it is coming up uh, rapidly nowadays, and now uh, all the Critical centers are like like an ABG. They are targeting tech nowadays, so everybody should be aware of the tech from nursing prescriptive as well. Okay, so that's why I have included this topic. So tech, uh, it it has a machine where which I have cup and the pin. Okay, uh, we'll we'll talk about that cup and pin later in the next slide. So tech it measures the all phases of hemostasis. Okay, from initiation to the plot. That's why tech is important. It shows the net effect of hemostatic component as well as the lysis component. Where, what is the utility value of tech? It demonstrates the all phases of hemostasis. It demonstrates the initial fibrin fibrillation, the platelet and fibrin uh, integration and plug construction, and the clot lysis. Okay. It identifies the balance or imbalance in the hemostatic system. Okay. It can cause uh, identify the cause of bleeding or it can identify the it can identify the prothrombotic state as well. Okay, that's a big advantage of tech. So tech, uh, we have a machine where we have a cup and there is a torsion pin into that. We uh, put a citrated blood, citrated anticoagulate blood in a, that uh, cup. The cup will be rotating around the, the torsion needle. Okay, the, the cup oscillates around the torsion pin and the magnitude of pin motion is directly proportional to the strength of the clot formation. The moment uh, the uh, pin will be static until the clot formation starts, okay? 
the motion of the pin will be uh, measured in a computerized graphic formation and that will give us the tech graph and tech values okay so the torsion piece remains motionless until the plotting begins so that will reflect your r time okay and the amplitude of pin motion increases as the plot strength grows stronger and stronger and the once the lysis starts the amplitude comes down okay and that is nothing but the beginning of the fibrinolysis we'll see the map and we'll uh, you'll understand how what all things i'm talking about with the beginning phase where the pin is motionless and the uh, amplitude of the most uh, pin is going uh, up and the amplitude is rising that will reflect the plot strength and what is the maximum amplitude of the uh, that plot uh, that uh, <clears throat> ma will reflect the plot strength and the lysis which is usually start after the 30 minutes okay so we'll go on to map and then you'll understand better so we usually we measure not usually we measure five parameters in tech what all those par five parameters uh, r time k time alpha angle maximum amplitude and lysis at 30 minutes okay so this is what so as I said, the beginning of uh, your uh, plot formation, uh, it is just the beginning. So in that case, the R time will be, the pin will be static and that will be reflecting the beginning of the plot formation. K and alpha will reflect the uh, uh, rapidity, how fast the plot is begin to form. Okay, and the MA will reflect the maximum amplitude. That will reflect the strength of the plot. And thrombolysis at, the, uh, uh, lysis at 30 will reflect the thrombolysis. So our time is nothing but the first time elapsed for the measurable plot form. R is impacted by plotting factors. If your plotting factors are low, the R time will be prolonged, okay? I'll just go back and front for these two slides, okay? So R is nothing but a initial time, which will be affected by the plotting factor. K time is elapsed until the plot reaches to the strength of at least 20 millimeters, okay? K is impacted by the fiber measure, okay? This is the K time. So from R time to uh, at least plot reaches to 20 millimeter, that reflects the K time. And K time is being affected by the, it's impacted by the fibrin measure. Alpha angle reflects the speed of fibrin formation. As I said, this, the rapidity at which the clot gets formed, that will be reflected by alpha and K, okay? Again, the alpha angle is being impacted by the fibrin measure, okay? So this is the alpha angle between the, uh, you can see the alpha angle uh, between the uh, R and that the graph which is going downward or upward. You can see the alpha angle. We'll, I'll I'll tell you the normal values in the upcoming slides. Okay. So maximum amplitude, as I say, the maximum highest vertical amplitude of the tape tracing, and which is impacted by the platelet. So remember all these. What all things are affected by what all the blood products? So R time is being affected by the clotting factors. K and alpha is being affected by the fibrin region. Maximum amplitude is being affected by the platelet function or platelet count. And lysis 30 is nothing but a percentage of amplitude reduction at 30 minutes after it reaches to the maximum amplitude. Okay. So after 30, you will see the lysis. So first half of the tech will show the coagulation, uh, coagulation workup, and the second half will show the fibrin lysis. Okay. So far clear because the uh, we are going into the values now. Any question? Uh, Dr. Manoj, any question in chat box still now? No, no, this time no question in chat box. Okay, sure. So we'll continue. So I request all participants, please interact with our speakers and please put your question on chat box. What are your, your queries about this um, population profile and tag? You put your question on chat box, please. Sure. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, discuss what is R, what is K, what is alpha angle, what is MA, and what is lysis as 30, okay? And what all the blood products affect those uh, values are also we have discussed. So now going ahead, so we'll discuss the normal values and how we are going to treat if the values are abnormal. So R time is nothing, no normal R time is a 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, prolongation of R time will reflect the efficiency of plotting factors and it is treated by the FFP, okay? The K time normal value is one to three minutes. Uh, prolongation of K time is reflection of the fibrinogen and it is treated with a cryoprecipitate. Alpha angle normal value is 50 to 70, 53 to 72 degree. A low value represents the deficiency of fibrinogen and it is treated with a cryoprecipitate. So 
K prolongation and uh, low alpha angle will be treated with a cryo. R prolongation will be treated with a FFP. Maximum amplitude normal range is 50 to 70 millimeters. A low value represents the deficient platelets and it's treated with a platelet transmission. Lysis at 30, normally the percentage of at 30 minutes, normal uh, lysis happens at 0 to 10 percent. Okay. Higher value indicate the excess fibrolysis, so which is treated with the antifibrolytics. What are the antifibrolytics we use in critical care? Like a tranexamic acid. Okay, so as I said, we can see the R time, K time, alpha angle, maximum amplitude, and lysis as 30. Okay, so as I said, R, if R time is prolonged, we'll treat with FFP. If K time is prolonged, we'll treat it with cryo. If alpha angle, it can have an impact on platelet also. So we'll go ahead, we'll consider cryo plus minus platelet. And max, if it is affecting a maximum amplitude, if the maximum amplitude is less than 50, the normal value is 50 to 70, if it is less than 50, we'll treat with the platelet. And if lysis is happening more than 10%, like, a, like normally 0 to 10% at 30, if it is excess, we'll treat with a tranexamic acid. Okay. So we'll see three graphs normal, uh, hemorrhagic, uh, normal tech, hemorrhagic tech, prothrombotic tech, and uh, febrilitic tech. We have four techs. So you, it will clear uh, the whole parameters which we have discussed till now. And then you can put your questions. Okay. So the K time, which is the beginning and the strengthening of the clot. Normal K time is one to three minutes. Okay. The alpha angle, the maximum amplitude, and the lysis at 30. Okay. So this is the normal tech. You can uh, capture the image in your brain and always remember the values and just visualize the tech. A normal tech shape is like this. Okay. So hemorrhagic tech. Hemorrhagic, where, what are the problems you see in hemorrhagic tech? We'll see the prolongation of R. Okay. See here the R is like only four to eight minutes. So the normal take the R here is 4.4.6 minute. K was 1.3 minute. Alpha angle was 72 degree, which was normal. MA was 64. Lysis was just at 30. Actually, it was just there was no lysis. It was just zero percent. Okay. This is the normal take. The hemorrhagic take. There is a prolongation of R time. Okay. There is a prolongation of K time. And you can see the alpha angle. There is a narrowing. The alpha angle is quite low. It is it is just the 16.5 degree. The maximum amplitude is also low. The normal is between 50 to 70. Here is just the 30. Okay. So yes, we can see the R and K alpha angle, maximum amplitude, which is also low. The lysis is okay, but it's more of hemorrhagic thing. So here. Uh, what all the blood products will consider now we I need an interactive session from the audience what all the blood products will you consider for this particular tech participants please involve actively in this uh, session so I request all you participants please actively involve because there is a prolongation of there is a prolongation of k alpha angle is low Maximum amplitude is low, so all four. The, uh, because finally, it will help you analyzing TEG in your day-to-day -day practice. So right. participate actively. Dr. Manmohan Moore say this is a yeah. webinar, and in webinar, uh, participate uh, can uh, communicate in chat box only. Okay. So okay. So please tell them to type your answer in the chat box. Sure, sure. But we okay. are not if able anybody to can that. raise the hand, then I'll allow them to talk. No issues. They can chat their answers in chat box. Okay. No issues. Okay. At the end, we can allow them to speak. Okay. Now they can chat, uh, type their answer in chat box. Okay. Okay, no issues. Nobody is uh, Typing as of now. So we'll move ahead. Manos. As of now, no any questions in chat box now. Okay, chat so we'll chat. move ahead. So here all the cognition parameters were abnormal. So R was prolonged, K was prolonged, alpha angle was low, MA was low. So you need to give FFP, you need to give uh, cryo plus platelet, all three. Okay. Uh, this is the prothrombotic tech. You can see the shape. Okay. 
remember the shapes and then see the values okay visualize the shape and then see the values you will get the answer okay? mm -hmm. yes somebody uh, viju sri has answered the fap platelets cryo good so that for that previous take okay so uh, see the pro shape of the prothrombotic tag here the r time though it is in normal range but the k time is shortened the alpha angle is quite huge okay normal is like 53 to 72 it's it's 80 degree here the ma is quite high it's 83 millimeter okay so you can see the r and k k is shortened r is still in the normal range but alpha is prolonged maximum amplitude is prolonged okay Lysis is still okay. This is prothrombotic take. So you are what test you will do? This this guy has a risk of getting clot formation. So what are the other like if it is congenital uh, risk uh, congenital disease of prothrombotic state? What all other tests will you do? No, no, she's. So here we need to give anticoagulants to treat this. Okay, a choice of anticoagulants will be dependent on the consultant. What are they? Whether they are preferring vitamin antagonist or preferrin or, or direct uh, or no ax. Okay, and the third one, like the last tag of this session, fibrolytic tag. You can see the lysis thirteen, which is usually should happen at thirty minutes, is happening quite early. You can see the shape of it. So R is okay, K is okay. Alpha angle is okay. Maximum amplitude is still acceptable. The normal is like uh, like 50 to 70. So 53.5, that's normal. Okay, but the lysis is 63%. Okay, there's a very rapid destruction of the clot. This is a fibrinolytic tech. Okay, so here, what drug will you use? Or what blood product will you use? Any answer for this? For hyperfibrinolysis, I told already in the previous slides what are the parameters D range and I have uh, corrections for those particular parameters. So for this particular take, you will use the tranexamic acid. Please put your answer on chat box. Participants, put your answer on chat box. Okay. So R, K was normal, alpha was normal, MA was normal, but the lysis was quite rapid, okay? It was 63%. So these are the different, different shapes of uh, tech you see. The normal tech will show the kind of, uh, the upper one, the first one will show the normal hemostasis, and there are different shapes for thrombotic and hemorrhagic. We have, we, we, we spoke about four, one is normal, one is hemorrhagic, Third one was a uh, prothrombotic, and the fourth one was a like uh, hyperfibrinolysis. Okay, so you can remember this. Uh, you can take a screenshot of it, or it, if you see, so the values are not mentioned, but you can have a basic idea of what exactly this peg is showing about. Okay, they can instead of giving the values, sometimes they can just give you the shape, and they'll ask you what this peg is reflecting. Okay, so remember the shapes. Okay, so on the on the left hand side of my screen. Uh, there is a hemorrhagic take reflecting okay so the first one showing the prolongation of r time which is so how will you treat with that you will treat the prolongation of r time and the k time is also prolonged alpha angle is also low so you will treat with the ffp and cryo the second will show the uh, narrowing of alpha angle and then prolongation of k so that will be treated with the platelet function and the third one will be the there is a quite narrowing of the alpha angle. So here you will treat with the cryo. And fourth one is the fibrinolysis, hyperfibrinolysis. You will treat it with the tranexamic acid. Prothrombotic, you can see uh, the secondary fibrinolysis, okay? Platelet hypercoagulability. You can see based on the platelet and enzymatic hypercoagulability, the shape gets changed. But in critical care, the hemorrhagic part is more important for us. So the shapes of the first four texts are quite important. But you should you should be able to identify the prothrombotic also because you need to step up the level of your anticoagulants. Like suppose anybody is who, who is chronic AF or metal, uh, metallic wall replacement requiring uh, warfarin 
the target for the INR is keeping around two, two to three, average of 2.5. So in that case, if the, uh, uh, your uh, anticoagulation is not adequate, you can assess the tech. But for that purpose alone, we don't do the tech, okay? But in cases of a uh, prothrombotic patient who can so the DVTP, you can always go for tech. If you have, if the affordability is not an issue, you can consider. Okay, so I have placed two MCQs. Uh, all uh, both the questions are about tech, okay? and it's quite easy. The kind of discussion we had, uh, you guys should be able to answer it in a first few seconds only. So the question is: A 55-year-old man admitted to the major trauma center following a motor vehicle collision. He's taken to theater for damage control surgery. The massive transfusion protocol is activated. Interoperatively, he received eight units of back cells, eight units of FFP, eight units of uh, pulled platelet. That is nothing but a RDP. Okay. The surgeon has clamped the bleeding vessel, but the reports that the surgical feed continues to ooze. Tag was performed, and the values of tag: the R time was 14, K time was 3, alpha angle 62, maximum up to 68, and clot lysis at 60 was just 11 percent. Okay. So, given these results, what is the most appropriate blood product? To administer to improve his hemostasis. So deliberately, I have not given the tech graph. I have just mentioned the values. So if you remember the values, you can see which value is abnormal in this particular tech. And if you find out the abnormal value, you'll know the answer as well. Participants, please. Oh, till at no answer in chat box. So should we wait or should we give an extra second in to them? Chat box, there is a one answer is there. COVID nine associated. No, no, no that, that no, that is not. Is, they, they must have answered for the previous. Just uh, one answer here is FFP. No, first tell me what is the abnormal value you see. Yeah, the answer is R is prolonged. Okay, good. So there is prolongation of reaction time. And as I said, you can remember the mnemonic, okay, FCP, okay. If the R is prolonged, the first thing is the FFP, the middle thing, second thing, if the K and alpha is affected, you will see the cryo, that is C, F, C, P. If the MA is affected, that is nothing better, you give the platelet, okay. So that's easy to remember. So here, you give the FFP, that's the correct answer, good. Okay, FFP is the correct answer. Next question. A patient is bleeding post-operatively. His platelet count is now 70,000. Uh, 70, uh, the ICU team organizes the tech as part of workup. Following things are true about this test. Okay. Which are true and which are false. It's like true or false kind of thing. It's a K-type question. Uh, Pradeep has raised his hand. Yeah, we have just last question, so he, we can unmute him, he can answer. So you have to see like whether it's true, true, false, false, or false, true, false, something like that. Okay. We can, uh, Deepa, we can unmute Pradeep. Hello. Deepa, are you there? Deepa. No, no. So we have tried no, to promote. Not, we have tried to promote Pradeep to uh, to the panelist. Now he can unmute and speak. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Yeah, he can speak. Pradeep, you can take. Yeah. it. you can answer it. Pradeep. <laughs> I think he's not able to hear us. No issues. So. Uh, go one by one. In short, R chat box one answer. Some about no potami answer is D. I think no. uh, the D is actually two. no. Not, so D is false. 
So See, this kind of answer you mark it true or false. Yes. So we'll talk about A option A. The reaction time is it represent the speed of solid plot formation? No, it's actually beginning of plot formation. Okay. So the okay. So the option A is false. It's not the speed. The speed is reflected by K. Okay. The normal alpha angle value is 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. Yes, that's true. So like the normal range is 53 to 72 degree. The K time reflects the contribution of fibrinogen, platelet and interesting clotting factors. Yes, it's a combination of both. Primarily, it depends on the fibrinogen, but it can have uh, effect of, from the clotting factors as well as from the plate, uh, platelet as well. That is also true. MA is increased in thrombocytopenia. No, we saw the hemorrhagic tag. If the platelet counts are low, the maximum amplitude will be low. So that is also false. So A and D are false. B and C are true. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Now we... Uh, Dr. Mohan, Manmohan I nicely explained about coagulation profile and different kinds of thromboelastogram. How to interpret what is the normal value, when to give, what to give. Very nicely explained by Dr. Manmohan. Now, I request all participants to either raise your hand or either put your question in chat box. So, I have one question in chat box, Dr. Manmohan. Yeah. It's COVID-19 associated coagulopathy. So actually we, we saw the more of prothrombotic states. The D-dimer was high in that. So we routinely did not perform a tech for those kind of patients. But uh, if they went into sepsis and then uh, secondary sepsis after the COVID and all. So if that goes into DIC, yes, we can perform tech there. Okay. But uh, not uh, specifically just to diagnose the prothrombotic state associated with the uh, COVID-19 COVID alone. Okay. So for that, we, we do the D-dimer. PTINR should be good. Routinely, we don't do that. And from participant sides, I have one question uh, for you, Dr. Manmohan. Yeah, please. Is any by doing TEG is any differentiating or differentiating points, whether is bleeding by warfarin induced or is bleeding by dual, suppose any patient on dual antiplatelet that mm -hmm. comes in uh, hematemesis, melina, and sometimes some patients on MBR, mitral valve replacement, replacement patients on warfarin. Mm -hmm. That also comes with like hematemesis, melina, hemoptesis. There is any certain differentiation uh, by doing tag we differentiate it is warfarin induced bleed or any dual and or either dual and antiplatelet. Antiplatelet. Yeah. Uh, uh, nice question sir so the platelet and uh, antiplatelets uh, will act, affect the platelet function so maximum amplitude is usually uh, the primarily which gets affected by the platelet okay so the uh, maximum amplitude will be low not only in case of thrombocytopenia but it will be low in case of platelet dysfunction also like for example of the person who is on dual antiplatelet when he comes with a bleeding and dic okay so in that case the primary uh, uh, parameter which is majorly affected is a maximum amplitude if it is primarily because of the antiplatelets okay and as i said because the warfarin okay so it is affecting your vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. Okay. So what are those vitamin K dependent coagulation factors? Factor 2, 7, 9, 10. So as I said, which parameter is primarily dependent on the clotting factor? It's the R, the reaction time. So if the, if the warfarin related associated bleed, the primarily it will be affecting the prolonging the R time. So there you will see the R time. So that's where we need to differentiate between the uh, whether he needs platelet. See, if all the parameters are affected, we'll go with, with all FAP, platelet, cryo. Okay, but in certain cases, we just need to give the FAP or platelets alone rather than giving them all and leading to fluid load or the trachotrally complications. So that's where the tag is important. So for, for your question, sir, if it is warfarin associated, the hard time will be prolonged. So FAP should be good enough. 
if it is antiplatelet the primarily it will be affecting the maximum amplitude so platelet should be good enough okay okay thank you now i have one question in chat box what is writing warfarin is safe I think which context he is he asked yeah. question. Uh, maybe like he is asking whether warfarin are we using warfarin nowadays? Like the risk of bleeding and all. Uh, the, the yeah, I think uh, of... that's why he is asking warfarin is today. But still, we have to for, for many city based many... surgeons, sir, it is still the preferred drug of choice. Like those who are staying in remote places, for them, if they are compliant with their diet, if they are. Uh, not eating vitamin k rich uh, the food and have a once in a month or like a frequent follow up with a pt inr they do use warfarin okay so it's not that absolute as well. with the invent of no with the invent of no act the use of warfarin has gone down drastically but uh, still there are people who are using it left and right okay so yeah, safety profile is okay. low compared to Novax and other things, but we have reversal agent. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. So you, you that's why that. nowadays doctor prefers Novax agents, not prefer warfarin. But uh, in the remote area or in some doctors are still prescribing warfarin. But for if you are prescribing warfarin, even doctors prescribe warfarin regular on regular interval basis. We check PT INR. What is the status of PT INR according to titled the dose of that warfarin? Okay. Now uh, I have one question. I think uh, no more questions in chat box now. Just have I have one questions, Dr. Manmohan, Manmohan just to yeah. focus on that will get benefit to the participants also. Yes, sir. Suppose Tell any me. patients comes with your um, ICU and uh, we did uh, initial uh, sorts of investigations like uh, acute liver failure patients come in your ICU and uh, we got in get in, uh, investigation that say the platelet is uh, 60,000 and his INR is 3.4. Like that, you get you get investigation uh, like this. If platelet is also low, and in and in fact, INR is uh, three point four. Now, by in this even INR is high three point four. By doing this tag, what are the different parameters on tag value will get? See, the INR is prolonged, so we know there is a problem with the width plotting factors. The platelet are low because he is going into ALF related coagular fatty DIC. So, TEG will tell us that uh, if the some highlight the points on TEG because this is a revision, that's the participants will use another revision on TEG. No, so, so by your, question, your question is like if the lab values of platelets are low, uh, TEG is low, so what what exactly you will see on take that's what you're asking me right yeah exactly exactly yeah again the same thing so if the inr is prolonged so you are the inr which is nothing but a pt pt is your measurement of extensive pathway okay extensive pathway involves a factor seven so it's again the clotting factor so clotting factors will be affecting primarily the r time okay so if the if that is the case then your r time is also prolonged the platelets are low then your maximum amplitude as well as your uh, k time is also prolonged to some extent primarily it is ma mo uh, majorly it affects the maximum amplitude but there will be impact on the platelet uh, k time also k yeah. time okay. yeah so but in alf case until he is bleeding or until unless we are planning any invasive procedures uh, we don't give FAP or platelet just prophylactically because we need to monitor the synthetic function of the liver, whether he is going down further or he is getting better with your conservative therapy, where we can uh, post him like a King's College criteria. There are specific criteria which uh, with their values for INR and PT. If the INR is more than 6.5, they are one of their, their kind of candidates for the uh, liver transplant in 
uh, as per the King's College criteria. I don't remember the exact criteria, but there are three, four parameters we assess in the King's College criteria. So we don't prophetically don't give FAP and platelets in case of ALS. Just yeah, exactly to correct those values. Just sometimes yeah. we are giving us to correct that values, but in yes. ALF is not necessary to correct that deranged values. Yeah, until until there, unless there is a bleeding or unless we are planning any invasive in process. process in Q. Yes. Okay. And uh, the from participant sides, if you have any doubts, you can ask. In chat box, you put your question in chat box. If there are no questions, we can. No, there is no question in chat box now. Sir, we can wait for two minutes. If there is no questions, then we can end the session, sir. Let's... Hello. Okay. Okay. What the uh, uh, one question in chat box? Uh -huh. There is a one question in chat box. Uh, is a one question in chat box, Dr. Manmohan. If yeah, a if... patient INR is high, then IV can be injected. IJV, yeah. They have, she has corrected. Uh, he has corrected IJV. Yeah. IJV. IJV can be injected. So nowadays, uh, we use uh, ultrasound guided. Uh, central line insertion. So, so if we are clear, uh, uh, hand skills are good, if you are confident enough, and if you are already done, place the ultrasound guided uh, lines before. The, it's the high INR is not absolute contraindication for uh, putting a central line in IJV. You can consider, provided your skills are good. Okay. If not, you go for femoral because in femoral, uh, incidentally, if you by mistake, if you hit the artery, you have a better compression site there. But high NR alone is not a contraindication for high IJV based on your skills. Okay. Am I clear, Aisha? Thank you. And just I add one more thing in these questions. Mm -hmm. INR high is also not a content indication, even sometimes in uh, ascetic patients and for parasynthesis, if you are planning to parasynthesis to trap the ascetic fluid, then definitely high value of INR, INR is not a content indication to trap the ascetic fluid. Yes, sir. right. We avoid arterial puncture, we avoid ABGs, we see the lactates in case of INR ALA patients, we do BBGs also. Okay, until unless we have arterial line, we avoid arterial punctures. Avoid IM injections like that. IM injections, right. Okay, so there is no further question. We can close the. I think we have to wait some okay. around two to four minutes, then we will close the session. Okay. So you can wait for one minute. If there is no question, then mm -hmm. uh, we will end the session later. Okay. Okay, Deepa. So wait for one minute. Sure. Okay. So I hope this take session has cleared your doubts now you can confidently look at text in your ICU okay rather than and specifically for the nursing rather than just showing the tag graph and values to the doctor you yourself can see the tag after this lecture and you can yourself judge what all the blood and blood products are required for that particular patient rather than just asking the doctor okay so and you'll be confident going ahead okay sometimes uh, it, it, it boosts your confidence that okay yes i can understand like an abg there are so many talks have been already conducted on abg but tag i i, I think very few talks have been conducted and tag is the upcoming things for the coagulation okay that's why today we we cover this tag particularly yeah okay, how to interpret your tag reports how to do tag 
how to interpret and basically in most of the important what products should give the patients that's the more important unnecessarily haphazardly you are giving ffp you are giving cryoprecipitate you are giving platelets so by doing tech you can separate what is the requirement of the patients what we have to give patient now that's why we discussed tech today yeah so, there is one question sir in the chat box ah, there are no reports if we check the patient in the emergency then what are the risk uh, question is not clear but like if i ask like question is like that if you are in emergency there is no report on platelet either it is thrombocytopenia suppose deranged inr so the patients come in emergency and do no lab reports are there i think that's i think participants so are is, asking like can, that see even tech takes one hour 60 minutes analysis okay if you are you can do both simultaneously and uh, okay if the patient has to undergo angiography in emergency angiography in emergency yeah so you can do tech you can send the blood uh, coagulation profile like as i said in the beginning cbc uh, uh, pt ptt inr okay and along with that you can do tech also because sometimes the tech comes early but uh, it is required angio is a uh, uh, life saving procedure so even if there is a risk of bleeding okay you have to take a chance because if you are worried for the bleeding you might lose the patient because of the mi itself okay so and we do give anti coagulants during the process but you will monitor you will do the coagulation profile in terms of pt inr aptt uh, if required you do the tag also those baseline values are important because after the angio you will uh, you need to monitor your therapeutic inr range based on your drug of anti coagulant okay Uh, drug of choice based on your anticoagulant what you are using so baseline uh, I, pt inr aptt it is important tag uh, not commonly used but you can do if you have okay so because angiography is an emergency process so you go ahead with angiography and then yeah, simultaneously the we do or uh, hemorrhagic we we don't wait so right we don't wait So, with your permission, I'll close the end the session. Thank you, thank you, Deepa. Thank you, Manoj sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Dr. Manmohan, for yeah. nice elaborating this session on uh, coagulation profile and tech. And uh, hope all participants will get benefited after this lectures, and uh, they will do in their ICUs or in emergency department, and uh, very well uh, interpret the data of uh, this this value of tech or coagulation profile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.